G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and the Football Come Down, a show where you guys contribute by leaving your comments every week on the round of fixtures, and I discuss them with you. And it is grand final week. How good is that? I can't wait to get stuck into all the fanfare and all the predictions for this week. This is such a good week every year, and I think we've got a fantastic grand final matchup. However, we're going to talk about the prelims before we get into the grand final stuff later in the week. So, Thank you to all the contributions. We had the most comments we've ever had on this show uh, with 78 people giving their opinion on this weekend's games. And I obviously had to trim that a little bit because they can't go forever. So apologies to anyone who didn't quite make the cut, but there were a, a stack of double ups. Um, but we do have a lot of input from you guys and I think there's some great discussion coming. So first of all, we can start with some general comments. There is, uh, there's quite a lot to go through, so I'm gonna get stuck into it. Gus Mumphrey says, thank you to the Brisbane Lions for saving us the first non-Victorian grand final since so six, who won in 06 again? Oh, that's right. Having to witness multiple non-Vic sides getting screwed over in prelims and now the pain feels like it's come to an end. I always wanted to see at least one more interstate grand final in my lifetime. That was the happiest night of my life, crying in tears of joy, of, pure, uh, of tears of joy and pure relief. Credit to the Gats too for making this far. You gotta love this game, without doubt, the greatest spot on earth. The 2024 season was crazy and remarkable, thank you. Wow, a very impassioned opening comment to start off. I think I was also hoping for a non-Victorian grand final. I do think you like to see neutral MCG games on grand final day. I think that's awesome. Come at meow says, since I won, this will be the Lions sixth grand final appearance and Sydney seventh. That's crazy. This is also the battle of the last two grand final teams that were defeated. That's right. This will be the first non-Victorian grand final since 06. Sydney defeated by West Coast by one point. Oh, that's who won. That's right. They'll be meeting in the uh, first meeting in the grand final between the teams. Sydney last one in 12, and Brisbane in 03. So, so good, good facts for you. Uh, Sydney have been in a bunch of grand finals since 2012, but obviously come up short. So they'll be hoping to change that this time. Technically not the first grand final because South Melbourne and Sydney are still technically the same organisation as are Fitzroy and the Brisbane Lions. So 1899 was actually the last time these two sides met in a grand final. Some dude says, shaping up to be a really good final with possibly two teams that like playing down the corridor depending on Brisbane's choice of strategy, facing off in a thriller in two teams that haven't played in the grand final since 1899. Swans haven't played the MCG since the 28th of April, uh, round seven. Did they lose to Richmond? No, I don't think, I think Richmond beat them a little bit earlier than that. While Brisbane will have played just one week before. So it'll be interesting to see if the Swans can adapt after three SCG games in a row. That's true, I think Brisbane have also really proven themselves in the MCG now. I think they've dispelled that. It's Bray though. I think this grand final will be one for the ages. Both teams coming off being runners up in the last two years, but only one will be able to escape the heartbreak of being a losing team in a grand final. As a Swans fan, I hope it's us, but either way, it'll be an awesome storyline to see get played out. That's true. One of these teams, you, you, my mind goes to what it will mean for the winner, but one of these teams will lose their second grand final in two or three years. That is that is hard to stomach. Sean Christie says, Port and Geelong blinked. The grand final we all need, Sydney versus Brisbane. Yeah, so I did a poll uh, a week or two ago saying, what was your preferred grand final matchup? Sydney versus Brisbane was the preferred matchup, according to you guys. About 47% agreed with that. So you got what you wanted. And, I, and to be honest, it was my preferred as well. Lunch says, Brisbane played their grand final last night in a hard-fought win. Sydney walked it in with an easy win over a typically disappointing port and will win the grand final by 20 plus. Big call, I'm not as confident. I will save my prediction for the Just The Tips video this week, but I think this is going to be a ripper. Both teams absolutely could win, which might sound redundant, but I have had plenty of grand finals where I felt like it was more obvious who was gonna win. Brizzy Bronx says, Bronze says the grand final has no Victorian team, so a perfect week of preliminary finals and the teams that can't get much better in the last game of the season than the Swans and the Lions. Perfect two teams picked them from the start. Yeah, so uh, looking back at my power rankings, I feel like most of the second half of the season, Sydney and Brisbane occupied the top two spots in the power rankings. Oh, I guess Sydney fell away, didn't they? But Brisbane, even though they finished fifth, were at times the best team in the comp this year. So no concerns about their ability to play in this grand final. Ash Boy says, Port had some serious issues playing the Swans, very lackluster prelim. Geelong and Brisbane game was an intense game which had everyone on their knees and feet. Wow, that's quite a maneuver. Credit to both of them. Yeah, so we will talk about the games more specifically as the video goes on, but uh, well said. Tree Stump says, first time all NRL state AFL grand final. Well, technically when you phrase it like that, yes, because those teams were Victorian when they played in 1899. Benjamin Rowley says, not Victorian teams in the grand final is the best outcome. 
John Edwards says, I'm very sad my team lost to the two in the grand final. There you go. So that's a GWS fan. They went out in straight sets to the two grand finalists. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's probably positive. Uh, it's certainly not bad that the two teams that knocked you out went on to play in the grand final. I think that's somewhat validating. Samantha Jane says, Sydney do feel very hard to stop. That was a four quarter performance from them. Brisbane though have won something like 21 of 25 first quarters. And now two consecutive come from behind wins against decent oppositions. That's right, I think at one point, um, were they the worst fourth quarter side in the comp or something like that? I think somebody said that in the live stream. And then they came back and had two come from behind victories. I'm honestly not sure who I'm picking next week. I'm just happy I got my dream of an interstate grand final. Seeing 10, tens of thousands of Geelong supporters vacate the MCG in record time was a great sight. I must say, there's a little part of me that is also, I like the colors of both of these teams clashing, like the red and the maroon. I presume Brisbane will wear maroon shorts. I hope so. If you've been watching for a while, you'll know I do. I am passionate about what teams wear on grand final day, and I think it's going to be very aesthetic. So comparatively, between the two games that we saw this weekend, one got a much bigger reaction than the other. Sydney versus Port Adelaide, um, I, what I say it went to plan. I think heaps of people probably thought Port were a chance, but you'd say Sydney were fairly decent favourites. There was obviously the whole factor of Port winning eight in a row against them. But in a prelim at the SCG, and with Port's qualifying final lurking in the memory of, of a few, I think Sydney rightfully started favourites, and the game more or less played out that way, didn't it? They sort of got a bit of a lead, and I don't think Port Adelaide put, played that poorly, to be honest. I think that was just a clear gap between Sydney, who have at their best been far and away the best team of the comp this year. And have they reached fifth gear? Perhaps, perhaps not. Um, but, you know, I thought there was a decent contrast to Port Adelaide's performance against Geelong and Sydney here. Um, I felt like the effort level late was still decent. They just couldn't quite match a much better team. And, you know, to be honest, Port Adelaide won the clearances in this game, 34 to 28. And they won contested ball. But Sydney were, you know, their pressure was fantastic and their outside game was fantastic as well to be able to put the scores on the board and ultimately win fairly comfortably. So we got one Sydney comment here. Some dude says, Swans played probably one of the most strategically dominant games in every way. Port played mediocre, but still a decent team that maybe would have been eighth or ninth if you just saw that game. Mainly suffering from bad entries into the 50, which made it very predictable for Swans defenders. It shows that the Swans at their best are probably the best in it, but they can't consistently hit their peak. Yeah, that's true. That was a feature of this game. And it's, it's been a feature of Port Adelaide's season, the whole long bomb, in, bomb into the forward line strategy. I think all fans complain when the team goes long to a contest constantly. It's usually a sign that uh, you're getting the ball in a bad position and the other team has already set up behind defensively. But Port Adelaide do it so routinely, it does seem to be a strategy here and, and Sydney certainly, yeah, probably outcoach them for sure. Uh, we've got a heap of Port Adelaide comments here and, and they're quite conflicting. There's some that are fairly uh, lenient or positive and others that um, are very much done with Ken Hinckley, so we'll get into it. AFL Snap says Port Adelaide were useless and Eli Louth says Hinckley out ASAP. Interesting. I um, don't know if I share the Hinkley out thing, to be honest. I think if you make a prelim, the, the finals performances have not been good. And whilst they weren't terrible in this game and they played well against Hawthorne, uh, that Geelong one does sort of stick out in the memory, doesn't it? But they're getting, they're getting deep every year and arguably one of the more consistent home and away teams over the last stretch. So I think Hinkley's signed on for one more year, isn't he? I think probably go one more and then reassess. Jaden says, Port seemed to put all their eggs in one basket last week and just didn't have the fight in them like they did against the Hawks. That's fair. Got a feel for Boke, poor game, but amazing player. I've seen some mixed opinions on Boke. I didn't think he was too bad, but Port Adelaide fans are kind of harsh on his performance. Dixon's final game, you'd think so. I'm not sure of his contract status, but probably, right? Is Hinkley the right man? So close yet so far yet again. Well, I feel like Hinkley... If Hinkley bobs up, and this is a big if, but if Hinkley gets Port to one flag, just one, say next year, then you look back at that form and you, you, it suddenly validates all of the performances up to this point and go, wow, he's been remarkably consistent. Look how many prelims and finals. You know, he's fantastic. That was what happened with Chris Scott. There was doubts about him before he won a flag. Hinkley's still got to win a flag. But i just making the point that his, his actual performances have been okay. Um, that being said, I understand the desire perhaps for a fresh approach, maybe 12 months from now. Swam deserves to, to win this grand final after such a dominant season. Yes and no. I don't think they would be undeserving, but they did drop off hard, didn't they, for a little bit there. So I think both teams deserve it, whoever wins. 
Just Cause says, despite all the Port fans being disappointed, including myself, we look at it now and Port Adelaide overperformed in 24. Heaps of people had Port outside the top eight at the start of the season. So to make it to a preliminary final with a really young group and a captain and a vice captain who are both only 24 is a remarkable effort. They did have a few players missing in this game, which are also key. Rosie and Butters, I think, um, you know, that while they can still get better, though, they are top level midfielders. So I think to expect Port to finish outside the eight. Now, I did predict them outside my eight, but I did say in the prediction that I was just picking a, a team to slide. But if you look at talent, and I did, I do think I said this in the video, if you look at talent, Port Adelaide probably should be going deep, to be honest. And their list profile is really good, and I don't think they're necessarily going to fade away when you consider how young some of their best players are. But I wouldn't say it was an incredible achievement to get where they did. I think it was more or less an expectation that they would get close to the final four. Just my personal opinion, though. Jesse Ho oh, says, Considering Port were down, Houston, Farrell, Marshall, and Finlayson, since round 21 they beat Sydney, I don't think they did half bad. That's a fair point. Those are fairly key players. Port's playlist went down, Sydney's went up, plus with the home ground advantage, it would have been a very big upset for Port to win. I do agree with that. Not sure whether Dixon or Boak will stick it around for next year, same as Marshall for different reasons. I am not aware of Todd Marshall potentially leaving. I think they should keep Marshall in, but play him slowly, don't rush him back into the team. Apologies. Quick Google has informed me that Todd Marshall is undergoing a brain scan and there's some degree of doubt over his career. I missed that completely. Okay, geez, uh, fingers crossed he's okay. Dixon in particular, I'm torn on. He wasn't bad on Friday, far from it, but his age is definitely getting in the way, I reckon. If they can't, if they just keep him in the goal square and keep him there, I can guarantee he'll be a much better player. That's fair. I do kind of feel like it's time to move Dixon on personally. Excited for Ports 2025, we'll have SPP back, amongst the others that I mentioned above, hoping Houston stays. Logan Evans will grow into a really dangerous player next year. He showed a lot of potential this year, and I'm excited to see how he plays in the future. And I will do, definitely agree with that. I think Logan Evans was really impressive this year. And honestly, give Ken another year. He's contracted, and I think he's done enough to warrant it. I think, yeah, one more year at least for Hinkley. Mando says, Paul will be back. Good young talent, and hopefully they can retain players like Houston. I don't think Hinkley should be sacked. Spin Doctor says, Port's insistence to kick long to packs in the Ford 50 was strange. It had to be a coaching decision. I get that you don't want to turn the ball over against City at half back, but by half time, they had to realize it wasn't working. There didn't seem to be a plan B. Personally, I would have subbed Charlie Dixon and played Ch Horn Francis out of the goal square. Tough one on Horn Francis because it's definitely robbing Peter to play pay Paul. Butters was quiet. I think Rosie had 17. They kicked a couple of goals, to be fair, but I think Horn Francis is also super important. Uh, to, to the midfield battle. So yeah, tough one there. But it is it does seem to be a, a real trend with Port Adelaide opting to go for that long option very consistently, which their fans find frustrating. Nick McLean says, Port need to recruit a psychiatrist. They were never a realistic chance to win, but, but the way they look so flat seems as though they didn't give themselves a chance. Improving their list will keep them in contention next year, but building belief will take them to the next step in September. Yeah, I think when you look at a, a stack of evidence there that Port Adelaide, despite you know, reasonable expectations have underdelivered in finals over a period of time. I think it's fair to consider what can they be doing in in house to be adjusting the mindsets of these players. And I do think I, I recall Will Schofield saying about this about West Coast in 2018. Not so much a psychiatrist, but delving into the idea of mindfulness allowed them to navigate games a lot better, including when they got five goals down in a grand final. So there, there might be something to that. Can they do something a little bit outside the box? And then on Saturday night. Brisbane and Geelong played in one of the best prelims that I can remember, honestly. I think part of the narrative is that the underdog won, and I must admit I had my doubts Brisbane would, would win this game. But they seriously impressed me, and they were fantastic, particularly as the game wore on. Even, in, I think it was just in the third quarter or just before halftime, the only thing separating Geelong and Brisbane, and there was like a 17-point margin, I think, at halftime, was three unbelievable goals. Uh, Grind Myers soccer assists. The way he scans the field is incredible. Um, you know his own goal and Dempsey's goal. I said this at the time on the live stream, but that was the only thing separating those two sides. And Brisbane responded when they needed to, and from that moment on, really were all over Geelong. And you know, there's a bit of recency bias saying it's the best prelim I've ever seen because prelims don't really live long in the memory like grand finals do. And I'm sure there's been some amazing ones. Sydney Collingwood a few years ago comes to mind, but that's as good as any as I can remember with Brisbane having several players stand up in the big moments. Um, you know, Lockie Neal was consistent. Hugh McCluggage had an up and down night. I think he got caught a couple of times, but was still great with his work rate. Zach Bailey tried so hard, had some really good moments, 
probably, you know, there was a, a miss on goal that I think he'd rue, but obviously they ended up winning anyway, so who cares? And Cam Rayner right at the end. It was just full of everything. Um, the only concern here for Brisbane is Oscar McInerney's in serious doubt for the grand final, which we'll get to as well. But Geelong, very, i say an honourable loss. I think you have to acknowledge both the fact that they were favourites and being a home MCG game, not a true home game, but I still think would have had some advantage playing at the G against the side that had travelled as well. This is a missed opportunity, but I think it's an honourable loss. It was an absolute war. Um, Graham Myers, I thought, was pretty fantastic. And Max Holmes' injury could have been a bit of a factor there. I still think the better team won on the night. But Max Holmes' injury, um, it's almost... I'm almost pleased that he that they didn't win so that he didn't miss out on another grand final. But anyway, fantastic game. Let's get to the comments. We'll start with some Geelong-focused comments, right? So Jimmy Ricard says, People wrote off Geelong. To be honest, as a supporter, I had hopes we would make it to the grand final. But to get to where we did, I think overall this season was a huge win for us. We should be back stronger next year. Trade period will be exciting. Well, that's true. With Bailey Smith coming into this team, I do think Geelong could get better next year. Um, but an unbelievable season that I think... I already respected Geelong massively. I did a whole video of them in January of this year. I think they've risen again in my estimations for getting a group that I don't think was the most talented. There are some star players on it and a lot of good role players, a lot of late draft picks and their ability to get these guys playing cohesively and playing good footy is second to none. So congrats on a great season. Ash Boy says, as a Geelong supporter, I never thought we would make it to the prelim. So proud of Geelong for making finals. Let's bring on a non-Victorian grand final. Uh, we'll, on the, we'll be on the Swans bandwagon. That's a very gracious thing to say in defeat. Again, Geelong were fantastic and um, certainly proved everyone wrong, surely. Muzu left says, love it. I hate everything about Geelong. Mike Russell says, Geelong is out and that's all that matters. Great job, Lions. Cat tears will be flowing tonight. So some anti-Geelong sentiment in the comments. I think this is a product of Geelong being so good for so long. An appropriate handle says, not even a Geelong fan, but Chris Scott coaches the life out of that squad. A few star players surrounded by youth and average players might be the best coach in the league right now to get that to a prelim. Also, taxes, death taxes in Port Suck in September. Uh, I agree. I just made that point as well. Um, average players seems harsh to say because I think, you know, they're, they're playing good footy. But, you know, just like what draft pick was Ollie Dempsey, Lawson Humphreys pick 60 or something like that. Um, Sean Manor picked 31, picked a mature age player. Brian Myers was a pick in the 50s. Uh, Tyson Stengel, the listed free agent. I think this is a sign of not only a good coach, but a great organization and, and good recruiting. But it's hard to know where the good recruiting ends and the, and the culture and the development and the game plan starts. It's, it's all included. Music Hats King says, hard to be happy for Brizzy right now, but I'll get there and I'll be hoping they beat the Sydney Sooks. <laughs> Devastating result for us, but there are 14 other teams who would have uh, loved to got to where we did. Given I had them as top six, while well, most people wrote it off completely, it's still a very good season as we continue to refurbish our list. Yeah, fantastic. For a team that's in theory in transition, to get pretty close to making the grand final and potentially winning it is an unbelievable achievement. Then we got a whole stack of responses to Brisbane's unbelievable win. So Archie says, Brisbane, despite probably going in as underdogs, have more momentum than Sydney do and potentially more motivation after last year. They're reminding me of what the Bulldogs did in 2016. This is true but i also think that was true of gws in 2019 and then we see what happened in the grand final i'm not saying that's going to happen either momentum is is key uh, but gws was, was a heroic story to make the grand final coming from six or seventh in 2019 i don't think they're going to get walloped brisbane uh, i do see the parallels rota wash says brisbane have had one of the best comeback seasons in history that's right they were two and five fagan has been criticized for his tactics forever but the last couple of games he's made underappreciated adjustments Feels like the Lions in the second half of the prelim were playing a whole new brand of footy. They did lift to a gear and they were just all over the Cats. It was fantastic and the contest, they were unreal. Spin Doctor says, Swans and Lions peaking at the right time. That's true. I think even though it's first versus fifth on the ladder, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind, Brisbane deserved to be there. There's no sense of flukiness or just peaking at the, at the right time being finals. But Brisbane have been good since round seven and their best footy is top tier. The Lions are far removed from the team that lost last year. The team of chipping around and taking uncontested marks is the bad version of this group. That is a nice skill to have, but it should be the fallback position. They have to run off half back and through the center if they want to win next week. Well said, I agree. And there, there are a few different pieces to that team that weren't in that team. Specifically, Will Ashcroft and also Kai Lohman adds a nice spark up forward too. Stephen Curry or Stephen Curry says, Lions can play great at the MCG when it matters most. Again, that's true. 
That's true, okay? They had a bad prelim there in 2022, but we are getting further and further removed from Brisbane not showing up at the MCG. Honourable loss in the grand final. They beat the Ds there uh, in a final not too long ago, and this was the best of the lot. Beating Geelong at the MCG, good on them. That's that's their best finals win of this era for sure. Tosic says, Lions aren't scared of the MCG at all. All their young players are as talented as any other team. Ashcroft, Wilmot, Loman, Morris, and Ashcroft 2.0. I know, it's getting scary. What if they get pick one in the draft and win the flag? That's going to be silly. Play on footy says, Lions are hungry for redemption. Charles Atkinson says, as a Brisbane fan, this team is different than it's been in the last few years. I do agree with that. With players like Lohman, Rayner, and Ashcroft stepping up, there's no reason this isn't our year. I have full belief that Brisbane can win the flag. Jai says Brisbane might win it all now. LD Sports says John Longmire would have loved watching that second prelim. Lions will have some sore bodies after that one. I suppose that's true, and I do think probably Sydney would have been barracking for the Lions on the basis that 2022 went poorly and playing the Cats at the MCG on grand final day is not a position that's going to fill you with confidence, but the Lions being a neutral opponent and the, as you say, the tiring nature of that game, you never know. You never know, but I certainly wouldn't be getting overconfident playing the Lions right now. Lachlan says, Brisbane are better than we thought entering finals, but are they better than Sydney? Well, I guess we'll find out in seven days, but I think I've been more impressed with the Lions in this final series, to be honest. Pull your head in, says, really hope the Lions bring home the cup, they deserve it. Hate Sydney from a West Coast supporter. I might be one of the only uh, West Coast fans that kind of like Sydney, to be honest. Felix Hoff says, Ashcroft will be a top three player in the league once Neil goes. Yeah, he is... Possibly, he's different to Sheasel and Dacos, um, but you know he's so, very impressive with the way he can just drop straight into a finals environment and play well, which probably makes him similar certainly to Dacos. And, and Sheasel we haven't seen in the final yet, but I don't have any real doubt. I'm not going to push back on, that, back on that argument. He was unbelievable and really important already. Shadow Light says it was a true cat fight between Brisbane and Geelong. The Lions' ability to rebound prevailed, though, as a far greater finals performer than they were in the home and away season. It's a credit to their performance as a good transitioning side and will no doubt hold them in good stead in the grand final. This is true. That's back-to-back heroic performances in finals. They did get seven goals down against GWS, but then they came back and won. So that's all sweet, right? Um, and then against the Blues, they were 60 to nil up. So they have not put a foot wrong in this entire final series. Maybe for a half against GWS, but still heroic stuff to win. Leo King says, assuming the big O won't play, Brisbane must bring in Darcy Fort. They can't have Joe Danher playing four quarters in the ruck, and they can use their three tall forwards to expose Sydney's undersized backline. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I have absolutely no idea, but I wouldn't rule out McInerney playing still. If Jeremy McGovern can piss blood for a week and Bailey be able to walk and then play in the grand final and play well, Oscar McInerney is a chance. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but I agree, Fort probably should come in. Danaher as a full-time ruckman. It would be very brave on grand final day, to be honest. And Leo King also says, Brisbane need to put in a plan for Heaney because when he does not play well, Sydney usually do not. Dunkley and Starsevich need to do a taggy role on him. You'd think that he would be the number one man. There's a few ways Sydney can hurt you. Um, in the shape of Chad Warner and Errol Golden for sure. But Heaney, again, what do you have? 24 and 2 in the prelim. Agreed. Biggest barometer player that they have. And uh, that would be where my attention goes to. There you have it, guys. That is uh, both of our collective responses to an amazing weekend of prelims. I'll be back this week. I'll be here all week, obviously. Grand final week. Best week of the year. Honestly, I cannot wait. I've been listening to Holy Grail a lot by Hunters and Collectors. And. Uh, just can't wait to get stuck into it and I'll be happy with whoever wins the flag but keep an eye out for my grand final predictions probably tomorrow by the time you're watching this and for now I'll say goodbye and thank you for watching cheers